Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. to drop by to our little get together we're on the air we're on uh, we're on the air there we go I just press the button so you lighten back of me it says on the air okay all right well um you know this is uh Tuesday and we have a new uh, Tuesday tradition uh, that seems to be uh uh, at our throats again, ladies and gentlemen, let me see here. Let me go to, I've got to do a little uh, t- uh, turnabout here. Hold on a second. got to do a few things. There we go. Okay. How, oh, there he, oh, wearing a hat tonight, eh? Yeah, it's cold out That's here. That's Phil Meyer, ladies and gentlemen. What do you mean it's cold out there? It's going to be cold here tomorrow. We're going to have a big snowstorm. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, no snow here, but, uh, uh, you know, I'm... I'm uh, on a diet, and uh, I'm juicing. Oh, God, I, not I, another I, one. I, yeah, another, you know, it's I, not I, sustainable. I, I need, I've, I've gained a little bit of weight, so I want a diet, but I ain't going to do no juicing. Well, you know. juicing is not sustainable. Uh, I saw a movie uh, a while back called Fit, Fat, and Nearly Dead. Hmm. And this guy came from Australia, mm-hmm. and he... Uh, decided that he was going to go around the U.S. for yeah. a few months yeah. uh, juicing out of his trunk with a generator mm-hmm. and a juicer and then run into people as he was going and give them, uh, you know, see see if they like juicing. Let's see if they well, like juicing. Okay. I tried it. Mm-hmm. I lost, I don't know, 10 pounds the first time I did it. Uh, I gained back a couple, not all of them. Uh, and my sugar went down. I My blood pressure went Damn. down. I was... I was do I was on a great path, but after six days, I couldn't do it anymore. I, it was not sustainable. Mm-hmm. So uh, in the last week or two, if I eat a piece of bread or a morsel of rice, mm-hmm. my sugar is messed up for for a week. Well, hey, you know, look, um, and I've got to go back on it because I, I've gained the um, uh, the COVID fifteen as they call it. You yeah, know? and I don't like that. I'm not. Uh, by the way, how do you like this? This is a new thing that Marjorie bought me. That's really comfy. It's got fur lined and everything. Is that for outdoors or indoors? It's for, it's for both. Oh, okay. But yeah, I'm wearing it tonight to be nicer, and I'm also wearing my ring now because I gained so much weight; it doesn't fall off of me now. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, you know what happens, is, and and you know I'm a dieter from way mm-hmm. back. Uh, I for 50 years I've been battling weight, and. Uh, I uh, I did the uh, the Atkins, mm-hmm. and I lost eighty pounds. Mm-hmm. I never felt better in my life, and I kept it off for five years. Mm-hmm. But eventually, I started cheating mm-hmm. and this and eating that. And not only did the weight come back on, but it came on with a vengeance. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so you got to be you know you got to be. Well, really I did what essentially was Atkins, and as you know, I lost uh, about sixty pounds, something like that. Yeah, at least. You know, well, I'm back up to about 100. And I, last time they checked, it was like around 110, uh, 210. Uh, well, that's probably not a bad weight for you, uh, for your size. You're what, 6'2"? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, but, uh, but you know, y- y- um, uh, you know I, I just, uh, I don't know. You know, I don't know. What am I trying to lose weight for? You know, it, it doesn't uh, do me do much good for me. I was all, I was weighing less, and okay, that's fine, but, you know. It's more comfortable okay. using the toilet. I'm not trying to get laid anymore. Why am I? Why do I want to lose weight? Well, it, it's nice to be able to see your toes, and uh, you know. And, see, you, you and know. Faye aren't married. She can walk out the door tomorrow. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But, but I'm married, so she's got. If I put on, if I become job of the hut, she's got to live with it. Well, you know? I, I tell you something. You knew my ex-wife. Yeah. Uh, I was married. Mm-hmm. She took me to the curb. Mm-hmm. Uh, and after 23 years of marriage, wow, 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, we're at an age. What are we? What are we going to do? We're going to get divorced? Come on. You know. I mean, it is ridiculous. You'd be surprised. They always think that the grass is greener on the other side. Well, let me ask you. You had. Oh, by the way, I talked to I talked to my urologist the other day because uh-huh. he had to just do a yearly checkup on me, and also because he had to fill out something for the state of New York. Uh, he has to do it for everybody that he has uh, said has uh, prostate cancer. So uh-huh. he just had to ask me a few questions and so on, so he could be cool. All right, with the state. Imagine I have to be in a cancer registry all right anyway so uh we had the cancer he did all that stuff and then i started talking to him because he's a great guy and i asked him the question you and i've been asking about with radiation and fatigue right and he said oh yeah he said absolutely yeah, they, don't tell you that. Huh? they don't tell you that beforehand no <laughs> no he said of course he says you're gonna have he says you may have it for up to a year and right. you know, what about the minute he, the minute he said that, I wasn't as fatigued as I have been, you know, because it just made me feel, oh, okay, I'm a, that's the reason for my fatigue. Well, yeah. now now the unknown is known, so yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it, you could be more comfortable yeah. with that. So, like, you, you, you had your prostate removed, right? Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I'll do anything to lose weight. Yeah. Right. <laughs> you had your prostate removed. Uh, the same thing that Al Roker had uh, a couple of weeks ago. He had his oh. uh, prostate removed, right? Yeah, but he also lost what a hundred and something pounds. Yeah, but uh, then he gained some of it back. But anyway, he 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 uh, he's in his mid sixties, late sixties. So they removed the prostate. All right. So you lost your prostate. I still have mine, but it's got a whole bunch of staples in it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. It's got all those seeds in there. In fact, I, I told my uh, my uh, urologist, I said, I'd like to come down for a regular checkup, but I don't want you to give me a digital because I don't want you cutting your fingers on my seeds. You know? Yeah, really? Yeah. And he laughed. He said, you're not far wrong. <laughs> you know, I mean, they're all in there. He says, they're inert now. That They're in there. Anyway, but I have found, and I, you know, I'm, I'm willing to admit this, folks, so please bear with me, that I... It's hard for me to have sexual thoughts lately, you know, well, and it is an age, you know, I just had all, they just beat up my prostate like it was a punching bag. Uh, you know, uh, I, I understand how you feel. I've had the same issue, but I think that part of mine was due to the hormone that they uh, injected in my tushy. Uh, Do you think and- so? Well. Yeah, it was supposed to last for six months, so I think sometime in January. They gave it to me in July, mm-hmm. so uh, the latter part of January, yeah. uh, maybe but I'll... But I just, uh, you know, I just have a hard time getting a sexual thought, you know. I, it it kind of reminds me, I had a cat once uh, named Shabbos. Uh, you I, did, I, you, I remember that. Did you remember Shabbos? Oh, yeah, you had a Sausalito. Yeah. Oh, wow, that's how far back I, I, we go. Yeah. I think, uh, what's his name, uh, uh, who was the guy from Bam Magazine's brother? Uh, but, 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 yeah, yeah, I know who you're talking about, but I can't remember now. Uh, it, Erica, Dennis Erica. Yeah, Dennis, but his brother. Yeah, uh, John uh, Erica, I think was the name. Johnny. The last name is the right Some, name, yeah, but yeah, I, I don't yeah. remember the first name. He was a heavy set guy. Uh, anyway, I remember sitting at your dining room table, and he, I believe that he had taken Shabbos to the vet to have her put down. Yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah. Because uh, I couldn't do it. Him down. Shabbos was 18. 18 year old cat. That's pretty old in cat years, you know. Uh, was that the one that would poop in the tub? No, no, no. That's another one. But anyway, was... what happened with Shabbos was uh, my, my, my Ronnie uh, went out and uh, had him altered, mm-hmm. right? Okay. Then she altered our other male cat, and I left her before she could get around to me. Thank you very much, folks. I'll be here all week, all right? Anyway, um, Shabbos was altered but every now and then we had a female cat in the house who wasn't every now and then he would go up to her grab her by the back of the neck right as cats do in yeah. mating and he mounted her and this went on for about a minute and then it was like all of a sudden he said to himself i can't remember what i'm doing <laughs> you know it was like completely forgot what it was all about, and he would just get off of her and go, sorry. 
You know? now, and could, she would get really mad. She'd hit him because he, she wanted to get laid, you know. So, Well, he uh, he lived, you said, till he was 18. How many years is in cat years is that? I, you know, dog years, it's seven you years. You know, for- I'm tired of that whole dog years, cat years. It's 18 years in cat years. Yeah. You know, it's eight, you know, I don't know. They say 18 years would be, they said about 10 years for every year for a cat. So he, a lot of litter boxes. Yeah. So he was, uh, no, it wasn't, couldn't be 10 cause he'd be 180 years old. I don't, I know. I don't, he'd be somewhere like around 80 or 90 or something like that. Yeah. yeah. He was a great cat. He was my favorite cat. Yeah. Uh, and then we had the, the, the one that uh, pooped in the toilet and stuff. Uh, uh, not, in the it, toilet. not po- didn't poop in the toilet, peed in the toilet. Yeah. Pooped in the bathtub. I had never seen that before. Your your bathroom was right off the bedroom, and we used to watch, uh, the three of us would watch TV mm-hmm. in your bedroom. Uh, the TV was up on a, a little stand, and not stand, it was on a shelf type thing near the window. Mm-hmm. And uh, the bathroom was right next to it. And then all of a sudden, I, I look, and the cat's peeing in the toilet. I had never seen anything yeah, like that. Yeah. It was amazing. And we Plus, never we never taught her we never taught her how to do that. She figured it out for herself. She used to watch uh, Susan all the time on the on the toilet. And uh, she would just they're watching and watching and then one night we're sleeping and I hear somebody peeing in the toilet and I figure it's Ronnie and I, uh, Ronnie uh, Susan and I look over at Susan. She's in bed and I go to the bathroom and there's nobody there. I'm going well, I'm hearing things and there I was dreaming. Go back uh, the next night. I'm sleeping. All of a sudden, I hear somebody peeing in the toilet again, and I get up and I go into the bathroom and there's nobody there. But there are these two little wet paw prints on the seat, and I went, "No, couldn't be." And the yeah. third night that it happened, I got up, rushed into the bathroom, and there's the cat sitting on the toilet, going, "Don't bother me," you know. When did Mouse go blind? She just went blind. We I can't remember, but all of a sudden one day we realized she was blind. She'd gone blind. And yeah. she was but she got she got around just fine. You know. Yeah. And I'm not a cat person, but I liked mouse. Yeah, she was a great little cat. Yeah. yeah. And so was Shabbos. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, uh, I don't let's not talk about it. I'll start crying. Uh, I know no, the feeling. I mean the cat's been dead for God, what, twenty Five, oh, 30, 40 the years. The early 80s. Yeah, 40 years, something like that. And I still think about Chavez, you know, because yeah. he was so Zen, you know. He was my, he was, uh, he was my Zen master. Yeah. yeah. And wow. uh, with, uh, with that, you know, look that is, uh, well, you know, uh, I'm going to be here for a long time, long after you're gone. That's how he felt about it. You know. Yeah, well, it didn't work out that way. No, it didn't. I killed him. Uh, but uh, anyway, so he died. Dennis Broken's brother killed him. Yeah, yeah. I think it was John. Is his name. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. I think it was. Yeah. yeah. He was uh, Dennis Eric, and in case people don't know, there was a magazine in San Francisco, music magazine called BAM, Bay Area Music, which if you had a thing about Bay Area Music, the Bay Area, San Francisco Bay Area, was very big, big center for music. I mean, Grateful Dead, Jefferson Airplane, and I go on and on. And so he started a magazine about Bay Area music. And um, did, Dennis, did Dennis die, I think? Oh, he's, uh, he, he lives in Lafayette. He's still alive. And okay. uh, he's into some sort of um, a promotion. Or, oh, okay. Uh, All right. Then maybe it's his brother that's dead. I don't know. I. You know, I, I, can't, so. I can't keep I can't keep I, I can't keep track of these things anymore. You're not as old as I am, but when you get to be 81, like I'm going to be on Friday, yeah, happy uh, birthday coming up. By oh, you just say now is he dead or isn't he dead? Like you know who I was looking up the other day uh, because I I didn't know whether he was still alive or not it was um, um, uh, um, Doc Severinsen. Ah, no, I don't think he's alive. He is. Oh, no, Doc Severinsen. It was the other guy, the sidekick. What's his name? Uh, oh, uh, Ed McMahon. Yeah. Ed McMahon, yeah. yeah but Doc it. Severinsen, the band leader on The Tonight Show, yeah. was, uh, let me see here, he's 91 years old. Wow. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, he's living, I think he's show. living in Mexico or something like that. Well, I guess it's cheaper there. <laughs> you know, uh, just about everybody that worked on The Tonight Show uh Johnny Carson made a lot of money. I mean, a lot of money, Carson Productions. And uh, my first steady girlfriend Mm -hmm. when I was maybe 14, uh, 
was uh, her uncle was the producer of the Tonight Show. What was his name again? Uh, uh, D. Cordova. Yeah, D. Cordova. Yeah. And so uh, Amy was my first steady girlfriend. I actually gave her a bracelet and uh, the, the whole thing. And she uh, broke up with me. She says, I have to give you back your bracelet. We're moving to Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. I said, why? You know, she was really cute. And so uh, she said, well, my my uncle works for uh, Carson Productions. or mm -hmm. something." And uh, she says, uh, where he goes, we go. And uh, so, uh, you know, she moved uh, to Burbank or, or you know, L.A. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I always said Johnny Carson broke my uh, broke up my first relationship. Oh, OK. You yeah. know, the people that worked for Carson Productions made a lot of money, although uh, De Cordova died broke. Did he die and, broke? Yeah. Yeah. And I think Ed McMahon kind of the same thing. So no, I'm I, trying to remember Freddie de Cordova. He was the he was rich. He was the the producer for Jack Benny uh, years oh. earlier, and then he was the producer for for Carson, and then he consulted uh, Letterman when the Letterman mm -hmm. show went over to CBS, um, and uh, he knew he was in high school. He was he was raised in Germany, and he was in high school with Anne Frank. Wow. And didn't have a ni didn't have a single nice thing to say about her. Wasn't Anne Frank Dutch? I I don't know, but anyway, he he knew her. Oh, so I maybe he was in the Holland. I don't know. I think yeah. it was Freddie D. Cordova, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, well, I'd never met him, but uh, the I know I what it was. He was a Holocaust survivor. He might have been living in Holland or wherever she was, and they, he went to school with her, and huh. and. He used a rather unsavory term to describe her. Well, uh, the problem that he had with uh, the Tonight Show was he told Johnny Carson to to stop whatever he was doing, and Johnny took offense to that, mm -hmm. and uh, you know he was pretty much on the outs uh, for for the rest of the deal. Well, D. Cordova was like I I you know this was the kind of guy that you had around you because he was a legend. You yeah. know, well, he he had worked with Benny, and then he had you know done the Tonight Show, and then he then he, he when what happened was when Letterman was trying to decide whether to take the CBS deal or not, he's mm -hmm. the one that went in and helped negotiate it, oh. and basically told him, "You take this job." He say, and and uh, at one point, uh, supposedly, he said to D. Cordova, "But all my life, I've wanted to host the Tonight Show," and he yeah. looked at him and he said, "Just think about this." There is no Tonight Show anymore. Johnny's gone. Okay, yeah. and you're and, and and if you got it, you're just getting spoiled goods. Yeah. You know, and yeah. and so he went and took the uh, the CBS deal, and of course it turned out great for him. You said he that uh, Carson made a lot of money. I think Letterman made more. He, That's he, got, well, he got up to about thing. 33 35 million dollars a year and I don't think Carson ever got into that territory well, it was a different time you know when yeah. Carson yeah. was on the air uh you know 10 million dollars was uh, unheard of a yeah. uh, sum of money yeah. now uh you know except mm -hmm. you know you know it, these sports figures and and they're mm -hmm. getting 140 million a year Bill and I are here talking about all kinds of things and not once. If we talk politics tonight, not once. No, but, um, you know, I, I was wondering, you did you see the debates uh, between Warnock and, uh, no. per, and, and then Purdue? And no. uh, he didn't show up. Purdue didn't show up. He didn't show up. No, uh, he, uh, he uh, now Purdue was debating the younger guy. What's what's his name? I don't know. Uh, yeah. Ostroff or something. Ostroff. Yeah, Ostrof. Some, something like that. <laughs> some sort of animal. Yeah. And anyway, Ocelot is there on the stage, and uh, there was no Purdue. He's uh, now. I don't know if that was a smart move or not. That's not a smart move. No, that's not a smart move. It could be they feel that it looks like they're going to lose. That that could be that they think they're going to lose, and uh, by not showing up, you just say, "Well, that's the reason I lost." You know. Mm -hmm. Uh, he he felt that uh, uh, the his opponent 
was lying about uh, what he was saying and uh, and and about him. So he didn't. Well, uh, then you go to the debate to set it uh, set it straight. You know, I that's what I thought. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. I want the Republicans to win because I do want them to continue to maintain the Senate. But uh, I'm I'm not sure that that was the best strategy. Do you think that the Republicans in the Senate are doing the right thing by stalling this covid relief? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I I did hear that the COVID relief bill has been stalled, but I don't know why. I think that Democrats want to bail out states and their pensions and things like that, and that the money is really not going to go to the people that need it. And That's not uh, what I've heard. What I've heard is that basically what the Democrats want is, among other things, they want the states to get some money because, you know, they don't have a lot of... They, they, this is, COVID has cost them a fortune, okay? Right. Uh, you know, New York is close to broke. Most of the states are close to broke. And now they're being expected to give out these vaccinations, and they have no money to do it with. You no. know, so, uh, well, they, you know, they need some kind of help at this point. And I think that's one of the things that the Democrats want. But I, I just don't know, you know, come on, give people some relief. They need it. The, the, the restaurant owners, the, the, the people who work at those restaurants and aren't able to bring home a paycheck. I mean, come on, let's let's do something for these people. It is, it is awful uh, yeah. what's going on, although I, I don't know enough uh, about the particulars to be able to say that it was the Democrats that are holding it up. The Republicans are saying that it, it doesn't was the matter. Demo- it doesn't matter who's holding it up, but it seems like uh, the Senate is not is the one that's stalling it just simply because, of course, uh, the Democrats can get anything they want passed in the Congress. And now it goes over to the Senate, and the Senate is sitting there with their finger up their ass, not doing yeah. anything. And uh, that's largely because of the Republicans. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know. uh, moving to a couple of other topics. Yeah. Uh, you got the Hunter Biden thing. Yeah. Have you heard anything about that? Because Fox is saying that no one else is reporting on it. Well, they say nobody's reporting it, and I, I kind of agree that they're not. I think part of it is, at this point, it's still pretty much a non-story. You know, they, all that's happening is the FBI is investigating him, and right. it's all about taxes. It's not about mis, uh, mis uh, use of funds or whatever. It's about taxes. That's how they got... Capone. Yeah, yeah, but I'm saying that uh, uh, they, that's how they get everybody. Uh, right. But they say he owes four hundred thousand dollars in taxes and blah blah blah. But well, you know uh, they 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 they, they are investigating him, but they haven't charged him with anything. It, no. it, they've just said that there's an investigation going on into his practices. My feeling is, let's say for a moment Hunter Biden did everything they said he did. Okay, that doesn't make uh, Joe Biden guilty of anything. Although he had the keys to the office. Well, no, 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 no. You know, I mean, this kid has been kind of a problem for for Joe most of his life, you know. And Joe has tried to stick by him and support him, support him in his endeavors, uh, as any good father would, okay? Uh, And uh, the kid may have uh, screwed up badly on some stuff and uh, now they're trying to turn around and kind of blame it on Joe and I I, I don't think that's fair I think you blame it on Hunter okay yeah. you know he's the one that's guilty of, if he's guilty of anything so far the FBI hasn't charged him with anything they're just investigating him um, uh, there was one other thing that I uh, had heard about which mm-hmm. was the uh, voting machines in Detroit oh not in Detroit Michigan mm-hmm. they said that uh, uh, that these uh, Dominion uh, machines doesn't that, you know I I was mentioning this yesterday to somebody that the term Dominion sounds like some evil plot by some overlord you know we have the Dominion machines and and so they should really change the name of their company to like you know Tweety uh, Bird or something like that something sweet warm and fuzzy machines well, yeah warm and fuzzy machines yeah yeah, yeah. um uh, you know look. Uh, I'll give you. I'll give you Michigan. Okay, <laughs> it's, that's not the point. The point is free and well. Fair. I, I don't. I think you're you're looking at the uh, 
the, the one side of the story. The other side of the story is that they went into court in all these states and attempted to overturn the elections in those states using what they considered their proof that they were, you know, fixed and all of that. And every state, without question, threw them out the door, including the Supreme Court that was packed with three of his appointees. Yeah, uh, right. all fake news. <laughs> all, all fake news, right. Yeah, all of a sudden, the Supreme Court is, you know, part of that plot to rape babies in pizza parlors and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, shoot them up. Hey, listen, but, you know, we've kind of run out of time here. It's, a, it's always nice talking to you, Phil. This is, you know, we should just, you, you and I should just do a show together, and that, that'll be it, you know. Pleasant uh, Tuesday. Huh? It's a very pleasant Tuesday. It's a very pleasant Tuesday. I'll tell you what's happened, though. We're doing, we do this Monday show. It's turned into a really nice show. I mean, yesterday we just had the nicest time for an hour with some great people. There were like 15 of them on at the same time. That's great. You know, yeah. during these COVID times, you're really uh, uh, giving a service, yeah. uh, giving people an outlet. You well, know? that's the reason I decided to do the Monday thing in the beginning was it for that. Uh, I, w I, w I wish the night show uh, were doing that. And, and then after the fact, uh, many more listeners than I ever get to these shows. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'll give you a bunch of sound bites if you want, and then you can play them during the show uh, oh, I and see. people off. Oh, okay. Anyway, <laughs> listeners. well, let's call it quits because I got a bunch of people who want to get on here and talk to us. So, uh, I'm, uh, but uh, I love talking with you, Phil. This is so much fun. You know, this may be better than the way it used to be. I think so. Yeah. I mean, people are complimenting it. They say, oh, Phil's a lot of fun in this thing. You know, blah, blah, blah. blah. And I go, okay, fine. Giving them drugs? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's terrific. Enjoy. Anyway, uh, yes, I, I thank you so much for being with me tonight, Phil. I there he goes, ladies and gentlemen, Phil Meyer. Okay? Okay. Bye-bye, Phil. See you later. See you later. Okay. Anyway, uh, let's see what's happening here. Okay. Um, I'm a little, uh, when it comes to, right now, I'm, I'm fine. I'm in sync. But what happens is when we go to zoom, I'm not as much in sync tonight as I normally am. So if I, if I look like I'm in a foreign movie, you know, please forgive me. Let me admit a bunch of people here to the, uh, to the, uh, fold as we, uh, start to going to our zoom panel as soon as they, uh, all, uh, all sign in here, uh, and uh, let's see here. Do we have uh, everybody? Oh, we still have Charlie Wallace, but it doesn't matter. We can go to these people. Hello, Alan. Good to see you tonight. Uh, your old friend Phil was on with us a few moments ago. Wait a minute. Your mic isn't on. There you go. There you go. What, what, wait a minute. Actually, yeah. Shutting down last week, I had feedback, and so Phil told me to shut everything down, but the Zoom... And so I'm doing that oh, right okay. now. Well, it, it's, it's very good. Can you hear us okay? I hear you good. So, I hear you good. Now I see the little squares. Yeah, yeah. And, see, and uh, one, of, one, of them is, of one of them is me, of course. Uh, one of them is Brian Neary. And yes. uh, one of them hey, is Charlie, Charlie Wallace down in Texas. And we like, to, we like to think of Charlie as a Dr. Doom. And, uh, and we'll <laughs> it will show you why. Charlie... Give us the count yeah. and the amount. Uh, well, we set a new record again today. We we, we now have uh, 16 million. Oh, let me get my glasses. Okay. <laughs> you old fart, you. Yeah, 16,681,178 cases and 303,292 deaths. He's oh, a new COVID record today, too. Hey, we're number one. Out. We're number one. Yeah. You know. 248,000 cases in one day. Wow. Hey, wow. Almost a quarter million. That's amazing. Thank you, Donald Trump. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, see, I'm a little bit behind, folks. I'm a little bit behind. Uh, the, I, we, uh, every now and then I have uh, the problems with the, uh, with, this, with the sink on the Zoom. I don't know why, so I'm a little hmm. off. But it doesn't matter. Just close your eyes and listen to the audio. Hello, Vernon Nunn. We haven't seen you in a while. Yeah, I've been uh, taking it easy. Mm -hmm. Did the election turn out like he wanted it to? Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I can finally breathe now that the obsolete Electoral College has spoken. Yes, right. Yes. Oh, they did their whole thing 
the other day, and uh, uh, Trump, uh, Trump, uh, Biden is now officially president of the United States. President elect. President elect. Okay, he's going to be president. Yep. And uh, uh, and today, uh, let's see, uh, new new head of the Department of Transportation is Pete Buttigieg. Yep. Yep. You know. Just hope all those trucks don't have too many rear enders. Thank you. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to be here. Well, you, you heard Jennifer Granholm is going to be the new Secretary of Energy, right? Oh, really? Oh, yeah. I heard that. She can set my yeah. energy. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. We'll be here all week. Uh, Alan, uh, I'm told by Phil that you are a decorated police a former. Are you not? Are you still a policeman? No, retired. No, retired, but you were highly decorated. Yes, yes. For what? Uh, for running into a burning building and saving two people, well, a child and uh, wow. another child. So, wow. And then, of course, I got punished by the sergeant and the lieutenant for, um, sorry, mm -hmm. turn the phone over, uh, for uh, saying you're not a fireman, you're a policeman, stay out of burning buildings. It's okay to get shot on the job. You know something? You got to do what you got to do when you got to do it. You don't sit around and wait and say, oh, well, is there a fireman here who can run into that building? That's right. That's right. Yeah, I, I, drove, I, yeah. I drove around the corner and there was a house on fire. And I called in and said, and they said, fire's on their way. Just stand by. And, and the lady was frantic that her children were inside. And, you know, I just did what I did. That was hired to do. Wow. Well, in, in Sunnyvale, in Sunnyvale, uh, town over here, they uh, they actually do that rotation where the police are firemen and the firemen are police. They they do a rotation basis. Yeah, they're called public safety officers in Sunnyvale. Mm, uh, yeah, yeah, and so half of the year or one year they're firefighters, and the other half of the year they're police officers. It's very yeah. clever, actually. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, that, that, you know, it, well, congratulations on that, you know, right. and uh, more than congratulations, good, for, yeah. good on you, you know. To, to, Thank you. Thank you. Don't uh, forget, Brian, we're close by here. I'm in Fremont. Yeah, that's right. Where are you again? Fremont. 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 So what, right. what is right. a, So you're retired. How old are you, Alan? Uh, I'll be 62 right after you. I was listening to you and Phil talk. So I'll be 62 in December 28th. Oh, okay. Uh, and uh, I, I, I use Phil as my dietitian. It's not working real well. No, I no. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I weigh over 300 pounds, and I'm six foot tall. And yeah, he watches he, me on the gun range, and we're both out of energy after about 10 minutes. Yeah, well, I think that uh, you should not listen to him about weight loss, but you should find somebody who looks skinny. And then ask well, them how they're doing. Yeah, nah, I don't like skinny people. You know, he's kind of like my hero and my mentor. And I'm being serious. I mean, he's he's um, a really great guy. We've we've became close friends in the past couple of years. Mm -hmm. We talk almost every day. And uh, he's a very positive person. He's always got good things to say. You know, it, people find that strange because Phil on this program was maybe one of the most hated people I've ever had on a regular basis on a radio program. <laughs> and I and I and I continued to tell them that, you know, I've known this guy for what, forty years or some amazing amount of time. And well, that, he was a huh? oh sorry. What what were you gonna say, Alan? I was just gonna say he was a uh, a reserve police officer too in Richmond, California. Yeah. Yeah. For 20 years, and uh, they're a very busy city. And uh, for you to be a police officer or even a reserve officer, you are kept busy going from yeah. time to time. Well, what I was saying is that people were always going, oh, he's terrible, and whatever. And I went, that's the nicest guy I've known. He's a really great guy. I just, his politics are just yeah. out the window, you know. Well, to a Democrat, they are. To a Republican, they're not. No, I'm not no, a No, I'll tell you something. I'll tell you something, Alan. I, um, Marjorie was mentioning, and I told the story already on the show. Mar Marjorie was talking about a girlfriend of hers who uh, voted for Trump, who's a staunch Republican. And I said, I can see being a staunch Republican. Hey, I'm a staunch leftist. Everybody has their own opinion about the way things should be done, and I'm not going to put down a person because they're a Republican and they believe they should be done a certain way. I said, but there's a great difference between being a Republican and voting for Donald Trump. Yeah. You know, because Trump isn't really a Republican. 
He's whatever nope. he had to be in order to fill a gap in a party, you know. And if it was the Democrats, he would have been there with the Democrats and then been a raging liberal. All right. He was a Democrat most of his life. He gave to Obama twice. Yeah. He gave to Hillary's campaign. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, he is uh, he's not. Um, uh, but the point is, I said that, you know, I can understand being uh, a Republican. And I hold nothing against you for being one. If that if it serves your best interest, then I say go for it. All right, but I can't see why in that you would vote for Donald Trump. I could see that you would say, well, I'm going to vote Libertarian this year. Yeah, well, as an I'm, I'm I'm an independent, and I voted for Trump because he, he was a known quantity until he lost the election. Then I'm like sorry that I voted. In California, what, no, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me let, let, back up. Meep, 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 back up the truck <laughs> a little bit here. You you were you voted for him, but then you were against him after the election. Absolutely. What Absolutely. brought that about? His stupidity. Him uh, denying that he's, uh, you know, he thinks he's still going to uh, be president for another four years. I think he's going to prison for the next four years. <laughs> Uh, there's a good chance of that, you know. Yeah. Um, yes. I, I, he's probably he's probably trying to work a deal with Biden, yeah. where he says he concedes the election if Biden offers to um, pardon him when he gets in office. Yeah. Well, um, I don't uh, think I don't think Biden would do that. But uh, well, you know, I'll tell you. Uh, years ago, uh, who was it got heat? Uh, I'll go to you in a second, Vernon. After I make this point, uh, uh, who was it that uh, that uh, uh, well, Ford became president, and he pardoned Nixon. And everybody was mad at him for pardoning Nixon, and he said, the only reason I did it is I want to put this behind us. And if we don't put this behind us, then we're going to be around for endless investigations, endless trials, and everything else. It's better that the country heal than that we, you know, indict this guy. And I, I, that was a very, I thought was a very good point. Now, Vernon, you had your hand up. Yeah, uh, <clears throat> on that subject you just brought up, mm -hmm. I, I've got mixed feelings about moving forward. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, I'm all for moving forward in terms of the, comp the country recovering mm -hmm. from COVID, the economy recovering, and all that sort of thing. However, there have been so much shit that has happened during the last four years. If these people are not punished, they'll do it again. Well, you you know, I, I'm, I, I can't say that you don't have a good point there. Um, I think that, uh, uh, I mean, personally, me, I'd love to see Trump put on trial for any one of a number of different things. Uh, I just wonder if it's going to be worth the effort that's probably the question I have. Charlie? Yeah, well, we have history to show us. I mean, they, he pardoned Nixon. Mm -hmm. And so Nixon didn't really pay any penalty for that. So George W. Bush comes along, and he's even worse. He's torturing people, throwing them into Guantanamo Bay and stuff like that, breaking all kinds of international law. Nothing happened to Bush either. Trump yeah. comes along, and he's even worse than Bush. What, where Trump was bad and was terrible was that I think he took this democracy that we believe in and really shredded it, you know? Uh, and uh, I don't know that we can be that happy with that. Hello, Kevin. How, Hi, are, you? Alex. How are you, Kevin? All right. How are you all doing? Oh, we're doing fine. You know. Yeah, I didn't wave this time. Oh, by the way, I didn't, uh, I haven't told you. I, I am now have my, I, I used to have a tooth missing back here okay but i don't anymore oh you got the implant word. yeah yeah i got the implant finished the, I, had yeah, this, I heard you talking about gaining weight while ago yes i gained weight <laughs> from the tooth it's a big tooth too it's yeah. a big one but what happened was they pulled it out about three years ago and i went well you know i don't like the idea of going around without a tooth back there not that it's a big deal because nobody can see it you know, but it makes me feel like I'm forced to vote for Trump if I'm missing a tooth, right? 
So I went to this dentist and I said, I want to get this taken care of. And she looked down and she says, okay, we got to do it. My partner does uh, implants and he'll do the implant. But first, let's look at the rest of your mouth. Oh, no. Two and a half years later, <laughs> right, we get around to this. And this is why I went to her in the first place, you know. And uh, but we we got it taken care of, so you know I'm I'm very happy that I have that uh, that out of the way, and now and now I, now I, I only maybe have a few years left to live, and I can live them with a full mouth of teeth, a full mouth of teeth, full full mouth of teeth. Yeah, I guess that's right. You have to pay for that yourself. <laughs> uh, some insurance, you know. Yeah, out here in California, you're talking about ten thousand dollars. Oh no, 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 no never. Never, not any, no, it, it, basically, uh, I had a doctor who did it for about $5,000, but then this latest one, because we were doing it on insurance, did it for 3200 and I'm paying for about half of it, okay? Uh, uh, maybe more, because I think my insurance got maxed out. Uh, but the fact is that it's about thirty-two hundred bucks now. You you can get them pretty it's much cheaper than you used to, uh, and, and that's because there are a lot of dentists doing them. I mean, it used to be there was this magic thing, and you had to go to a person who did this for a living, and now it turns out no, you really don't have to. There are some dentists who know just know how to do it. It's very simple, and they they do it. You know, and it but, it just takes a long time. That's the only problem. Uh, yeah. yeah, they've got a place over here that all they do are implants. Yeah. So they have, and they have business nonstop. Yeah, and they probably don't charge a lot for them. It's probably a good yeah. price on them. That's the way they get everybody in the door. And they, you know, I don't know that there's any reason why it should be expensive. I don't think that the tools involved, I mean, you got to have a, a, a crown, which is normally going to cost you money anyway. And they've got to, the sink the implant and you know i did about how many i did maybe five visits mm -hmm. in order to get this done and then if i include the tooth being pulled that's an, a sixth visit so but i mean it, it took a long time because then they they take the thing they first if the tooth is pulled they have to wait three months okay then they sink the the uh, the anchor the, uh, the plug in your mouth then you have to wait another two months to three months for that to anchor itself to the jaw. Then you got another visit where they put a little, little screws in there and they do things and then finally they, they give you the, uh, uh, they, they do the mold for the tooth and then that takes another two weeks mm. and finally, yeah, you wind up finally having a full mouth. It's what wonderful to have it. It's what town here does everything in one day. I wonder what the hell he's doing. I don't. Doing... I've read that these places that go just one day. You come in and you'll leave with a new two, yeah. and you're going. Wait a minute. Wait. He does a whole minute. mouth. <laughs> no. Yeah. It's probably probably wooden teeth like Washington has. Who knows? I mean, <laughs> it, it doesn't make sense to me that you can do this in like one or two visits. I don't know it, if I'd it, want to. There's got to be. You still got to have the gums heal and stuff. Yeah, you have yeah. to. Yeah. He, he claims he has his lab right there and the whole thing with the whole construction. You just yeah, lay there. Well, that's you fine that he. Him. It's fine that he has the lab there, but you still got to have your your mouth heal first from the tooth being pulled, and then secondarily from the thing being drilled into your into your uh, into your mouth, which is really oh. I you know I don't know. I, he does I, a half-hour commercial and shit every day. Yeah, every I know, and they say they do it in one visit or something, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think that's impossible. I, I think they do some kind of beginning thing for one visit, and you walk out with, like, uh, what they call a clipper tooth in there and uh, yeah. while things are healing, and then they do the rest of it. But uh, I'll have to watch it closer next time because every time he comes on, I turn it. Where really? Are you at? Mm. Kevin, where are you at? Down here by Hollister. Oh, that's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you know, but uh, uh, Tony, how are you doing? I'm all right. How are your teeth doing? You had uh, really ugly teeth, and we, <laughs> and, yeah, and Shecky convinced you to go and get them. Yeah, he did. He he was very helpful, um, and they're doing better. I actually got dental insurance now. You know, I was told I got Guardian, so I feel a lot more secure, though. Like, I'm not hoping anything goes wrong, but at least I have, like, a backup plan, I figure. Alex, all the, every time I used to go to that dental, 
I'm like, oh god. You, you still know. you still have the braces though, right? Oh no, I took them off. Oh, I paid them all off oh, and everything. Oh really? Then how yeah. do, how did you how do your That's how's your right. mouth look? Better? The bottom is really good. The top, you know what he told me? He keeps trying to sell me on the bridge. <clears throat> on what? I'm, I'm the, he wants to do like a bridge in the front. But Alex, the bridge is like four or five grand minimum. I'm going to wait. Wait, 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 wait. The bridge, you're going to have to pull those teeth. Yeah. yeah. Why I would you show do Shecky the one why he wants would, to pull Why, why would you one. do that? Well, because Shecky was right. When I was showing in my teeth, even I told the dentist, I have a little tooth here that shouldn't be there. And they should have took it out, I think, before the advisor. But he told me he wanted to wait. The, his whole plan was to straighten them out as much as possible and then do a bridge to finish it off the top. Well, I have very unsafe straight teeth down here. Uh, you mine are good on the bottom. It's the one little one on top. Yeah, but you know yeah. what, Alex? I don't want to do the bridge right now. Because I figure, you know what? I don't want to give him five grand. Do I have to look this good, really? Come on. I'm home. The richest guy on the panel with comic book <laughs> money, and he's worried about $4,000. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, by the way, by the way, by the way he doesn't have a wife, a kid, or a woman yeah. he's dating. <laughs> so <laughs> consequently, uh, you know, all, all he can spend his money on is porn so he can jerk off to something, you know. What's wrong with porn? Huh? Nothing wrong with porn. Nothing wrong with porn. <clears throat> What? Yeah, that's right. What? I just don't want to give him five thousand dollars right now. I don't feel like doing like all those. I don't want to do it right well, now. Well, here's what I hate about Dennis. Uh, you need a cleaning. Oh, okay. Oh, fine. I get it. I, well, every six months. How yeah. often? Oh, every three months. You're you you're just a tartar mm -hmm. mill. Well, but the, the the insurance only pays for two a year. Yeah, they only pay for two. Yeah. So I I just cancel appointments enough so it only comes to two a year. All right. Mm -hmm. But the other day. Uh, I, I was talking to the woman. She says, "You well, you have an appointment on the week from Thursday." I said, "I thought we meant moved it to next to this <laughs> Thursday." And she said, "No." And I said, "Well, I just don't really want to do it. Then I'm tired of coming in a lot here, mm -hmm. you know, taking a car down here because there's COVID out there, and I got to worry about." It. I said, "Can we just move this to like uh, the middle of uh, of January?" And she said, "Okay." She moves to the middle of January. Next thing I know, I get a note from my doctor, my dentist. Well, you know, you really should have it done now because, you know, the, you could have dental problems. Well, I had it done three months ago. Come on. Didn't she get enough of that tartar out of there? Um, but it made me really, you know, he, it was like, but what happens is they then give you uh, the dreaded x-ray. Now, I say the dreaded x-ray because x-rays yeah. don't hurt, but they cost you money, a lot yeah, of money. Because what they're doing is they're mining for gold. <laughs> and they throw that vest on you too. You ever, I told the doc this has got to be cancerous right here. That big heavy vest. Oh yeah, no, they, yeah. They, it's they, made of lead. Yeah, but they want to make you feel good, good about it. You you're not getting enough. No. No. I no. Always think, Hell, I, I, always I was think under a giant uh, 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 radiation producing machine that pro did my prostate. Right? They didn't put a vest over me. Oh, you know, when my mother had the CT scan, I saw, I mean, that big scan, I saw, they let me look at it, Alex, it's like a big donut that you go in. Yeah, it's it is a big donut, yeah. He had to let me leave the room. I can do a me. CT, I can't do an MRI, I can't yeah, do Yeah, she it. can't do that either. Yeah. I couldn't do it either, Alex. I'm yeah, not, they I'm have sure. to give me, they have to give me, if they can't get it with a CT scan, they can't get it, because I ain't going into a... a I, I'm getting claustrophobic sometimes when oh, I get that Oh, I close. would just go, I, I'd start literally screaming and crying. What you know. they make Valium for, for people. Yeah, that they'll give you. You know something? I think you'd have to pump me full of tons of Valium. You, I, yeah, except you know, for I'm too uh, fat to fit in a in a, a closed MRI. Well, there there are op open MRI. Well, me. open MRIs are okay from what I understand. They're not claustrophobic. And I, I would probably do an open MRI if they really needed to do an MRI on me. But um, if, if you have brain problems, which, of course, I'm sure you do. I, yes, uh, of course. What? <laughs> Um, if you have brain problems, they're they're uh, a lot better seen with an MRI. Yeah. Uh, spinal problems. There's certain things that an MRI is superior. Yeah, but you know, do do a do an open MRI on me, and I'm fine. Absolutely. You know? uh, uh, why they have to put you through that excruciating machine is beyond me. Now, and for some reason, and it's noisy. Yeah, for some reason, yeah. with the with the a CT with a CT scan, CAT scan, I I don't have a problem because. If I look forward, I can see room, right? And if I look in back of me like this, I can see it. So all I'm worried about is that whole area that I'm just going through, and I just look straight forward, and I see that I'm not encased. 
uh, and I'm fine. Um, and I had to do a lot of CT stuff with this radiation. It, part of the part of the system is to use CT scans to aim the beams in the right place and everything. But anyway, so yeah, but anyway, so 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 what I feel about you know the. Uh, uh, the x-rays, is they're just mining for gold. Oh, good. Oh, we found yep. a little problem here. We better take care of that. And we got to take care of that. And we got to take care of that. Oh, don't worry. We'll get around to the, your uh, your missing tooth. We'll, we'll do that soon. Yes, Vernon? My dentist has a new device that uh, she likes to uh, get appointments for, and it's some sort of a laser that goes back and, and helps cure gingivitis. Really? Yeah, because it gets it gets rid of the bacteria that's below the gum line, which mm. they, she says is is causing the gums to, you know, separate from the teeth more, and that allows more food particles to get down in there, so more bacteria grow. Yeah, they give me that era. whole speech. You know, they've given oh, yeah, me yeah. that whole speech for eighty one years of my life, Black? and I still pretty much have all of my teeth. You know, the the tartar never suddenly. You know, the Deep bacteria cleaning. never killed my mouth. I used to have a joke about, you know, my doctor said my teeth are great, but my gums have to go, you know. <laughs> um, yeah, but but uh, I've always had that problem. And, you know, for all they've yelled and screamed at me about it, I go in, they clean it out, they do a deep cleaning on it, and I'm good to go. But that sounds like an interesting new item, that, that laser that goes in there, and it literally probably goes down and gets rid of all the plaque, right? Yep. So, did you do that? Uh, scheduled for next month. Next month? Okay. Yeah. And how much do they charge for that little yeah. procedure? Uh, after the insurance, it's going to cost me about 400 per side. Oh, that's not do, bad. They're going to do two. They're going to do two one, one time, and then next week they'll come over and do these two over here. And it's just the back teeth. Yeah. Those are the only ones that, that having, are having a gingivitis problem. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Gingivitis sounds like such a happy disease, doesn't it? Gingivitis. Yeah. You know, I, that's, I have Only gingivitis. if you're from Texas. Only if you're from Texas. Sorry, Charlie. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but, but her hygienist is really cute, so I, I don't mind going in oh, there. Oh, really? Oh, well, there you go. Really? Well, uh, I don't think that matters to me anymore since the uh, th since the prostate thing. You know, I just, uh, yeah, she's adorable. So... You know, you know what used to be the worst thing? I had one guy, one doctor, who did have a really good-looking, you know, assistant at dentist. And he loved giving me gas. Remember the days when you go in and they give you gas and now you have to beg for it and then they charge you for it? In the old days, they just that was the way they got you in there. You want to get high? Come on. You know, and uh, I would do the, uh, the, uh, the uh, whiffy gas and I was off to La La Land. He could pull every tooth out of my mouth, and I wouldn't care. All right. Uh, and it, but it, uh, uh, they don't do it anymore. But anyway, I would get high on this stuff, and his assistant was really good looking. And I would, I'd start getting a boner just from being on the gas and and looking at this woman, who was fiddling around with my mouth. She was putting a suction device in my mouth. You know, they don't, I also don't like the fact that we don't have those spit bowls anymore at a dental office. I yeah, kind of like that suction device was looking like a nipple, wasn't it? Yes. Yes, it was. <laughs> no, but the thing is, they now have the suction device. They don't have that little spit bowl anymore. Nope. And I like the spit bowl because I love to be able to spit and the With blood the goes down there. Around. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. At least I felt something was getting done. But now I leave and nothing's bleeding. Nothing's doing anything, you know. But uh, uh, Jeff, uh, you have any implants in you, Jeff? Oh, yeah. I, mean, I mean, besides your heart. No, uh, I've got my all my little dental issues, just like everybody else. Yeah, you know, the older you get, the more you have, you know. And yeah. uh, it's so different as compared to what it was when you were a kid. Yeah. And you went into the dentist, and I remember the guy would grind and. They didn't give you any medication. And you got to listen to the machine going. Arr. Well, no, uh, you could get to hear it going. Arr. And then when he would hit a place that it wasn't exactly able to drill that well into it, it would go. <laughs> right. It would change pitch. 
Um, as long as he doesn't say oops. <laughs> he says oops, then that's when I'm worried. Oh, I had one dentist early on as a kid. Uh, I remember it was Dr. Margoliash, who was my best friend's father. And he uh, looked at my mouth, and he's looking at my mouth. He's, you know, giving it the once over. This was in the old days when I don't think they, when they did X-rays, you know, they had to take them and send out to the local drugstore to have them developed. Ooh, and maybe. and uh, but he would look at me. He looked at my mouth, and he's going, "Oh my God! Oh, jeez! Oh, foo! Oh, oh, oh no!" Oh, <laughs> and finally, when we were through, I said, well, what's, what's, what's the news? And he said, your mouth's fine. <laughs> but he's going, ooh, ah, oh, no, oh, oh, God. And I'm, what God, I'm hearing in my gas. mind is $20, $40, $50, you know, with every ooh and every ah. But, so Bill tells me to ask you about irritable bowel syndrome there. Well, I you know I have irritable bowel syndrome, but I why? Keep, uh, huh? So do I. Yeah. Well, do you know how to keep it on, under control? Simple. How do you keep it under control? I'll tell you. I went to doctors. Oh, hey, hey everybody, enjoying this? We're losing audience as we talk about this, right? <laughs> you know, nobody wants to hear an hour on irritable bowel syndrome, but I will do it anyway, just for you, Alan. Thank you. Uh, I, I, you know, I, my, I had this problem, so I went to my a gastroenterologist, and he said, well, you've got irritable bowel syndrome. That's what they always say when you have diarrhea a lot, okay? They, it, oh, it's, uh, it's got to be IBS, because IBS is this catch-all disease that they can't exactly test for it, and they don't know what causes it, but they do know that you've got it, all right, just by the symptoms that you have. So uh, I went to him, and he gave me these pills, which cost me $300 for one course of them, okay? And then the price went up to $2,000, and no insurance company was going to, you know, go for that, all right? So I ran out of that, and I said, what the hell am I going to do? And I went, I was at Costco one day, and they had these probiotic gummy gummy gummies, and I went and bought some probiotic gummies. And I just, because they were so tasty, I would take two of them at, at, at night and in the morning. And all of a sudden, I noticed my IBS was going away. And so I started looking at probiotics. And they are the main way to do away with IBS. Now, do you take uh, probiotics? I take but the two major name brands, because they're the most studied, mm -hmm. Culturel and Align. Has and it, they come from good quality companies, so you know you're getting the real deal. Has it helped? Oh, night and day. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I, I would always have, I, I have a van. I have a, a Ford Econoline van, and I've mm -hmm. got a portable toilet in it. Yeah. Because you just never know when you're going to have to pull over on the side of the freeway. I call it the two-minute warning. You pass gas. Yeah. Yeah. And you need to find a toilet now. Right, right. You know? I, and so, yeah, pr probiotics are the only way to go. And then they're supposed to be good for you. With, with IBS, you know where every bathroom is. Absolutely. You know. Absolutely. It's hard to travel. Yeah. But 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 the, uh, the probiotics helped, right? So this company Absolutely. was trying to charge me $300, and now it was now up to charging $2,000. And no insurance company would go for it. Um I, I suddenly took the probiotics and went. These guys are phony. I mean, yep. I mean, what are they? What are what are they? Uh, yes, it did work, you know. But yes, Vernon. One of the uh, most truthful mm -hmm. criticisms that I've heard of the medical profession in our country mm -hmm. is that our doctors are not trained to cure you. They're not trained to cure anything. They mm -hmm. are trained to treat symptoms. Mm -hmm. That's all. That makes sense. Yeah. Well, they ought to go to Trump's School of Medicine. Well, here's the thing that I that's gotten to me. Now we have a vaccine now, and and yeah. God bless them for coming for coming out with this vaccine. It's going to save lives. It looks like it really works, and it's going to be terrific. Okay, they find out, they say the Moderna is even. They've said they've studied mm -hmm. it. And it will even help people who already have it oh, wow. survive. Yeah. Okay, so um, that being the case, um, I 
I, I'm so happy that we have a vaccination. And so is the American public, by the way. Soon it will all be over. You know, we'll get the vaccination and we'll be fine. There's just one problem. It's just like everything else here in America. We want the quick fix. Oh, yeah. Now, what was the best way to get rid of COVID? If everybody wore a mask, okay? Absolutely. Even had, he even had the head of the, uh, 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 the, who was it, Homeland Security or somebody like that who was testifying before Congress and said, better than any vaccine is the mask. If everybody Direct wore a mask, we would get rid of this thing. Director of CDC. Direct director of CDC. Absolutely. And that was the case. But America wasn't willing to do something as simple as wear a mask. They want a shot to fix it. You know, I, 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 I'm thinking they that if they did now. a study now. Yeah, what? I'm thinking <laughs> if they did a study, they would find two thirds of the people that died in this country that weren't in convalescent hospitals were Republicans. They were listening to Trump. I, I think you could probably put a little money on that. You know, uh, but I mean, I just. Uh, it, it, it's just that we had to wait for a vaccine as the simple cure rather than doing what it took to get rid of it. And all we had to do was all of us, every one of us, yeah. wear a mask. We still have to do still, that. We yeah, still they're still impatient. Yeah, you will have to do right that. Now. We'll have to do that yeah. for a while until... Yeah, and they're still impatient and they're still not waiting and they're still going to have their little things going on and wait till. You know, springtime comes and summertime comes until any of the general public start, and they're going to start going out again. Well, the thing hey, is, we're having a we're having a super spread or rally down this weekend now too. Really? Yep. Right down, right around the corner here. Really? What? Yep. What? What? What for? What are they protesting? Uh, they're they're calling it a toy drive. A what? For the Republicans, it's a steal. Stop the steal bullshit. Hmm. Well, anyway, the point is that that we we always look, we always look for the easy answer, and the easy answer isn't always the easiest answer. Mm. Um, also, I think uh, the the public is coddled too much. Uh, I was watching MSNBC this weekend, and Charlie, I'm, I want to hear what you think about this. And they got a bunch of black people on talking as the pundits. And they're all talking about the fact that, well, you know, the problem is, is that uh, the, the reason why the black community doesn't want the vaccination, a lot of them, is because of uh, a past history of the way blacks have been treated medically in this country. And I'm in complete sympathy with that. I mean, uh, we do know from things like what the Tuskegee experiments and things like yeah. that, and I believe it was the Tuskegee experiments, where they were injecting black people with syphilis and things like that to see, you know, what would happen. Well, of course, they got syphilis, you know. But they were doing it to black people. They weren't doing it to white people. So I know that I see a reason why blacks are very suspicious of any medicine. What I don't understand is why they're suspicious of masks. And by simply saying that, you know, uh, avoiding the fact that Blacks disproportionately do not wear masks. And uh, and some of them, and uh, again, Charlie, stop me if I'm wrong, blacks, a lot of blacks are disproportionately obese, which is another factor in dying from this That's disease. Comorbidity. Yeah. yeah. And rather than say, well, you know, we also have to talk to our black community about wearing those masks and me making sure they wear those masks and that black lives matter and that's why you wear a mask, uh, and uh, also we should, you know, tell them to lose weight, you know. They, they weren't doing this. It was that the fault was that they had been treated badly in the medical community or they couldn't afford medical help or whatever. And I agree with all of that. But then the simplest answer is, here, here's a 15-cent mask, wear it, you know, and they aren't doing it. Now, am I wrong, Charlie? No, I mean... I run into that all the time. I, I I don't know. I can't explain why people don't listen to common sense or don't listen to the doctors. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, the thing that bothered me is that here is MSNBC just coddling the theory that the reason why blacks are getting it disproportionately is only because of the way they were treated medically in this country. And that's not the only reason why, you know. 
And, well, to, and to, to, to not, not deny the other reason which they're doing because it's not politically correct is is literally kill, killing black people. You know, and so that's just okay my, with Trump. It's okay with Trump. Well, Trump doesn't Bill, care. He never cared. Yeah. Bill Maher has said from day one about COVID that the best thing that we could do in this country is for all of us to get healthier because the best way to fend off this virus is for your own immune system to be strong enough. Yeah, but, you know, we have a problem. You're like, take, take Alan here. Alan, you weigh 300 pounds, you say, okay? You'd like to lose weight. And if I told you tomorrow, well, the best way to survive COVID is to not have that 300 pounds, and you know that's a comorbidity for you. Uh, how long is it going to take you to lose that 300 pounds and get down to a normal weight? So that is not the answer, the one that Bill Maher came up with. But we have right. to be healthier, you know. Uh, you know, unfortunately, I think that the black community is is getting this um, because they're not offered as good a health care. Right. They live. They live. A lot of them live in inner city youth and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, in that area, you know, maybe the first time they ever see a doctor or a dentist is when they go in the military, or unfortunately, if they go to prison. And I think that I think that they're, mm -hmm. you know, disproportionately been a, that it's been that way for a long time with diseases. Uh, they have a much higher rate of asthma and diabetes in yeah. this country, too. Mm -hmm. And it, it's a real shame that nobody has addressed this uh, before COVID. But but yet you go over MB, MSNBC and they say the only reason why blacks are uh, uh, are disproportionately getting a dying of COVID is because uh, uh, of, uh, of, of their distrust of, of medical plans and things like that, of, of doctors. Uh, and I think that's giving an excuse and not giving the right information to make black people make sure yeah. they wear a mask. All they have to do is wear a mask. If they all wore a mask, I think the disproportionate dying would go down somewhat. Yes, Charlie? Yeah, what Alan said was really true that... Uh uh, uh, probably a higher percentage of blacks don't have health insurance than whites. Mm -hmm. And so they don't go to doctors until they're practically on death's door. That's right. Because it costs too much money without health insurance. But how does that play itself into, however, the COVID crisis? I mean, when the simplest answer is a 15 cent mask, okay, um, we're not talking about big doctor bills or anything else, but a lot of them are refusing to do that. I mean, in my neighborhood, yeah. I see that maybe I would say that half the people I bump into on the street in this neighborhood, which is predominantly black, uh, don't wear masks. And I mean, it's not like they've got the mask down here or using it as a chin guard. They don't even wear them at all. They're just prancing down the street without masks on. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, I mean, if there is a larger percentage of blacks who are, are dying of this disease, I think some of it has to do with the not wearing masks. Because if they were wearing masks, their chances of getting it, I mean, uh, yeah. tell me I'm wrong, Brian. I, I, you, I think they don't trust yeah, medicine. Brian, Brian, mm -hmm. you, but, yeah, but this isn't even, it, the mask it, isn't it, medicine, you know? Yeah, the, I think it's also, it's also of color, too. So... What they're doing in San Jose is they have these teams of Latin people that are going into from house to house in the Latin, mostly the, the lower communities. Yeah. Uh, and um, what they're doing is they're informing them. They're talking about the vaccine and they're informing about the vaccine to make sure that they're on a path to take that. The problem that they're having with the Latin community is that they're worried that if they go in there to take a vaccine, they're going to start asking questions. They want certain information from them. You know, and so they're they're seeing that. that well, they don't. Sort of, yeah, they don't want they don't want to have to give any information. For instance, if they're here illegally, that is. Yeah. yeah and they, and everybody needs to get it, whether they're here illegally or not. In fact, well, the illegals yeah. probably need it more than anybody else because, uh, you know, uh, they're the ones who are, are living under the worst apprehensions. If they knew that they could go get the shot, nobody's going to, you know, ICE isn't going to come and get them right after they get the right. shot. You know, uh we'd be fine. Um, but it, it, under Trump, mm -hmm. you need to worry. Under Biden, I think they don't need to worry. Yeah, but they, they don't know that. Educated. You know, and I understand. I understand why blacks don't 
are are don't even want to get the you know the the vaccine. I understand that, but I don't understand masks because that's the simplest answer. You don't take a pill. It's not medicine. It's nothing. It's protection. You know. If you knew that every woman you had sex with was going to give you AIDS, I think you'd be wearing a condom. You know. Hmm. Yeah. So. Couple. Yeah. I mean, Brian. Yeah. I mean, if if one wears a mask, it affords you a pretty good level of protection. Am I right about that? Oh yes. Okay. Just and, and I've always thought, I, and I've worn a mask all the time because, yeah, you you feel more comfortable with it too. Not just your stuff going out, but then you know you're taking anything less in, especially if it's worn properly. Yeah, but if somebody else is wearing a mask, now you're really protected. Oh yeah, yeah. Chances definitely. are you're not, you know, and and I I I got into an elevator the other day here in the building. Stopped off at the third floor. This woman come gets in. She's not wearing a mask. Uh, I'm in an elevator uh, with somebody who isn't wearing a mask. I've got my hand over my face like this to double protect myself. You know. I told her to get out of the elevator. I I should I should have done that. I should have done that. I didn't. So I just, either you're getting out or I'm getting out. I just I just put my hand over my face to kind of give me a slightly a double double protection. But I think that what that person would have said to me if I had uh, called her on it was, well, I don't have it. I'm feeling fine. Yeah. And that's not the answer because you could you could be co uh, you could be what do you call it? Uh, asymptomatic. 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 You could be you could be asymptomatic. And uh, you could still you could give it to somebody else. You know, yeah, in fact, absolutely. you know, so, I mean, this is, this is amazing. And we have, <laughs> one of my friends was over there. We're doing some, some renovations at our house. So uh, my friend's construction company, but he comes over, wears a mask. His workers outside wear masks. And we were talking, we have one friend that's on Facebook and you see him snow skiing and that stuff. And we <laughs> keep telling them, stay away from us. I don't care if you're wearing a mask or not, because he's out skiing and stuff like that. Crazy. Well, I always have to remind Marjorie to be very careful because she has a tendency, she has a girlfriend she goes and sees and they hang out and so on. And I'm going, you know, I, I, I realize, and this woman gets tested about every two weeks because she, she deals with teaching seniors. So she has to take a test every two weeks and that's fine. But that doesn't mean that two days from now she's not going to get it and that she won't be tested for another two weeks. But... You know, I told Marjorie, I said, you got to be very careful about this. Right now, we, today we had 126 people yesterday die in New York State. That's the highest we've seen in a long time. I mean, we were down to zero at one point, you know, and it's because people are being stupid, you know, and they're not. Well, I have a question, Alex. Mm -hmm. you, you, you asked Charlie about why blacks are not wearing masks. And around here in the San Francisco Bay Area, Almost everybody I see is wearing a mask. I'd like to know from Charlie, you know, I I don't see that. Black people are wearing masks around here. Mm -hmm. are well, they nobody's not? wearing masks in Texas. They are or they're not? They're not. They're, they're, not. Not. they're, they're in not. Texas. Come on, Texas. Tell them, Charlie, how many people have died in Texas so far? Yeah. 25,000, some hunt, whatever. They're coming close to New York, aren't they, for the death toll? Yeah, we're going to pass y'all probably next spring. Yeah, yeah. Everything's yeah. big in Texas. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, Even COVID deaths. <laughs> this is a state that has been so stupid in the way they've handled this crisis mm -hmm. that it is, it is uh, it, it, you know, they, they should uh, get, you got to get rid of that governor. It's what you got to yeah, do. Yeah. Twice yeah. we've had to cook, bring in the refrigerated trucks that handle the overflow of dead bodies. Yeah. And yes, the, the Texas attorney general thinks that he's so smart, he can tell other states how to run their elections. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, boy, that guy's an idiot. Well, you know what his story he's is. He's under federal indictment. He's under federal indictment. And what he was doing is trying to get in Trump's good graces to get a pardon, pardon. before yep. the fact. Absolutely. You know. And he probably will, I would imagine. I mean, he I can went. understand his motivation. I can't understand the motivation of the 17 other states that joined in yeah. that lawsuit or the 126 Republican congressmen who signed on to that thing. What they are engaging in is called sedition. Yeah, yeah well, yeah, I would agree with you. And today, uh, McConnell, finally, finally, 
said, congratulations to our new president. But that was after Putin congratulated Biden. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Oh, he did? Yes. <laughs> yeah, Putin did I didn't it first. Hear that. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. God. Yeah. Uh, Kevin, what are, you, what are you doing this for? Whoopee. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, he... Moscow, man, it's, it's the same best, direction the toilet bowl spins. The, the best thing we can do is make Mitch McConnell a minority leader again. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. You want to talk about fraudulent elections? Maybe he cheated in Kentucky. <laughs> no, Kentucky's a, a bunch of wackos, <laughs> except for Fayette County and Jefferson County, which are primarily blue. The rest of the state are a bunch of idiots. We found that in that part of the world, there are these people like McConnell who get get reelected over and over and over again. They have some kind of political power in that area. That gets them reelected. I mean, you you've had you've had a lot of uh, uh, stupidity, huh? Stupidity, stupidity. <laughs> yeah. Tell me a about bunch it. of country farmers. Pictures with farm animals. Yeah. Well, I, that's, know, I think I think in the Bible Belt. Yeah. I think in the Bible Belt, the priest tells them George W. Bush is a great guy. He's a good church-going person. Vote for him again. And I think that you know that a lot of times the people follow the preacher. Yeah, and I'm not a very religious person, but I think that that they got to follow somebody, and so the center of the country is constantly a mess to me mm -hmm. when it comes to politics. Yeah, yeah. Well, one, you of, know. one of the one of the strongest statistics that I heard recently for the national popular vote interstate compact is that if you look at the center of the country, the Midwest. These are all red states, okay? Mm -hmm. There are 32 senators in the uh, Senate right now representing less population than the state of California who only has two senators. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, well, look at the map. Well, that's... Look at the election map. You can it, see well, it's what, all what's red horrible, right in the middle. Yeah, I think uh, uh, there have been a lot of complaints about the Senate that way. You know, that, for instance, the two Dakotas between them have four senators right. and less population probably than you have in some of the smaller Delaware. Majors. Probably Delaware. less than Delaware. Less than Delaware. <laughs> yeah. Uh, more, I, more people than they do. You know, and for them to have that much clout, you know, it's kind of ridiculous. To begin with, they should make, they should just, North and South Dakota, who needs that? You probably need more something like North and South California than you do North and South Dakota. They should just bring the two together and make it Dakota and leave it at that. Well, before they became states, they were the Dakota Territory. Yeah, yeah. just one. Yeah. 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 So yeah. why did they make them South and North Dakota? What was the reason for that? Somebody had some pull. Huh? Yeah, I guess, you know. But uh, so the power that these people have in these smaller states is, you know, they have the same power proportionately that a bigger state does. And they in say, the oh, Senate. well, it was done because you don't want the bigger states to have all the clout and, you know, whatever. Yes, we do. They have the most people, mm -hmm. you know, and, and most, most people that need represent because I'm not being represented by uh, equally by by the uh, Senate. My two senators have the same amount of votes as the two two senators from North to South Dakota, you know, and, and so my, I'm not being represented well in that equation. Now, if you did the thing on the basis of population, well, then it'd be okay, you know. But the trouble was we, we also are all these separate states, and they're not really separate states. They're kind of separate nations, you know, and we've never, ever gotten away from that concept, which sucks, you know sucks a lot mm. but uh, uh let texas me... wants to secede again did you hear that who what texas is talking about seceding from the union again i say good riddance well <laughs> no I, I, I wouldn't want to see uh charlie be, i'd uh, have to move yeah, yeah. What, what part of texas are you from charlie i'm in austin yeah I love Austin. Well, Austin Austin is, Austin's a beautiful city. And it's also, I yeah. think, one of the uh, oases for intelligence yeah. down there. If I'm not yeah, mistaken, because you've got you well, you've got you've got the it's a it's a university town, you know. And um, 
and it's a beautiful little town. You know, it's also a beautiful town is, uh, what do you call it, uh, San Antonio. Yeah. Uh, I, went, I, I went there a while back for a party some people were holding. And uh, it, it really it has that river going through the town, and it's really a nice town. But it is one of the most infected hot spots in the United States right now. Mm-hmm. Where did the, hey, Brian, did, where did the Oracle say they were moving to in Texas? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. A lot of high tech. So Oracle's going to move there, too. I think they're moving to Austin also. Yeah, yeah I think it was Austin, yeah. too. Yeah. Well, Tesla yeah. moved. Tesla moved. Tesla, yeah, everything. Yeah. Did Tesla move to they're Texas? going to Austin. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah, a lot of high tech went to Austin. Austin in particular. Well, well Tesla just Luminex, got... One of my friends, my friends uh, worked for this company, went over there. And uh, a lot of a lot of people went over there. Didn't didn't Texas the didn't capital? didn't Tesla get uh, yeah. get uh, get pissed off at California, and that's why they left because of the tax yeah, situation. Yeah, the straw yeah. that broke the camel's back was when they kept closing them during the during the uh, COVID stuff. But yeah. did yeah. they actually move? Yeah, they did. No, they, the they, they moved their battery operation up to Nevada, but I don't know if they they said they were going to move Fremont, but they didn't actually do it. Yeah, they're doing the their headquarters is going there like Oracle and yeah. Oracle, you remember Alex, you remember what Oracle was before? What it was before? Uh, no, yeah. what? Uh Marine World. That's oh, where, where, where they're they're Marine at. World yeah. USA. Oh, you mean where, where it is as a kid. Yeah. Oh, you mean where as it a is. Kid, so where, you're a native too. Where it is, yeah, right? I grew up in Red Rose City and that was Marine World. We all went to oh, Marine yeah. World all the time. Yep. <laughs> right okay. off from Marine World Parkway. So yeah. it was. It's where Marine World was. It wasn't yeah, exactly. the Marine right. World became like Oracle. Buildings out there. No. Yeah. Yeah. Marine World was there, and that. So they Oracle used all that water, and they had the big towers there. Well, really I nice. hate Oracle because I don't like the guy that runs it. What's his oh, name? Larry, Larry, Larry Ellison. Ellison. Oh God. Ellison. He. Yeah. He waited. <laughs> he goes above. He doesn't care. He. He pays. I guess you're only supposed to land or take off from uh, San Jose yeah. Airport certain he times. He pays them to keep it after, open. Yeah, after ten o'clock, he doesn't care. He wants to come home when he comes home, so he just pays him or the fines. So, he, or whatever. so he's paying three million dollars a year. Is what I heard a couple of years ago, to be able to land after ten p.m. in San Jose. Yeah, yeah. that's why yeah. they keep it open till midnight. Yeah, 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 something like that. Yep. Oh, three boy. million dollars. Fuck you, money. Yeah, well, he's right, a, Alex, that's what you had before. Huh? Don't change. That's what you had before. Huh? 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 Hold the play. <laughs> Well, I mean, I wish I, I wish I had fuck you money. I would the things I would do would just you know, make it Larry Ellison look okay. Hmm. You know, <laughs> you know, if you had that much money, you could say I'm going to go to San Francisco and I'll just jump on my plane. I'll be there in five hours. Well, well you know, yeah. the interest the interesting thing is why doesn't Larry Ellison fly into San Francisco? They're open twenty four hours. They have planes yeah. coming. Oh, because he would have hours. to take a car down to his house. No. Yeah, it's it's shorter drive, but. You know, I mean, Larry Ellison's a douche. That's that's why, <laughs> you know. Anyway, hey, there's our theme. Oh, isn't that nice? <laughs> Maybe I'll come on and see you uh, on another day. Listen, Alex. please, Alan, you could call us every night. You're terrific. You're a great addition Thank to you. this panel. Believe me. Thank you. As is Brian Neary, who has always been a great addition to this panel. Charlie, who has been on this panel forever forever and we love He's him awfully quiet vernon nunn could call us more often but when he does and i see his name pop up i go this is going to be okay tonight kevin and tina i went is that was that kevin and tina's wedding the name of that show? Oh, Tony, that was another watch that show. previous zoom i was on sorry about that oh, okay now it's fine uh, and uh, uh, Jeffrey, you've been a little quiet tonight, but it's always nice to have you. There's soothing. We've seen all of Jeff's house the last couple yeah. weeks. He's got yeah, in he's every moving, room. Moving the room. all over. Yeah. Damn you know, <laughs> old around here. Yeah, yeah. And his wife is kicking him out of every room. So, you know, <laughs> next week we'll see her kick him out of the bedroom. Anyway, thank you, Jeff. And of course, Tony, great to see you again, my friend. Everybody give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye back. And we'll call it a wrap. Okay. Thank you. Let me uh, just to kind of get rid of them. Uh, they, they, if you want to, uh, right after us, uh, Jack Bishop does the intersection. He's going to have a citizen panel forming, so you might want to uh, join him. He does it on Skype with the sign-in of Gabnet Live. That is what you use to find uh, his uh, Skype uh, uh, 
existence, okay? Uh, in the meantime, uh, I'm going to go away now. And tomorrow night at 9 o'clock, there's a sports show here with the franchise MC. Damn it, it's a great show. Listen to it. And then I'll be here again at 1030 Eastern, Day Eastern Time. Same time, same station in life. And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. Be safe out there. You gotta wear a mask, okay? Bye-bye, everybody.